Jared Poland Frono's photo. Dot com and yes, I shot at 1600 millimeters on the EOS R5 with the RF 800 millimeter F11 to photograph Jupiter, Saturn, and the moon. Now, the reason I went up to my roof to try and do this is because I never knew you could actually shoot pictures of that with a camera like this. So I wanted to try it out myself. So this is the setup that I had. Like I said, R5. 2X converter, 800 RF, that makes it a 1600 millimeter F22. Now, if you're wondering why did I not attach the 1.4X converter on top of the 2X converter, uh, you can't. I would have if I could have, but you can't. I did try it out. I recorded with the Atomos Ninja 5 right here so that you could see my EVF and what you are seeing inside of the camera. You'll also see that it's slightly a little shaky because I used a video tripod and that may have not been the best choice, but when you punch in, as you'll see, to 15X, it's such a small portion of the frame, but I think you get the picture and get the point here, shooting at 1600 millimeters F22 on a tripod on the roof in the city with light pollution, you'll be pretty amazed as I was. So check out the EVF footage of Jupiter, Saturn, the moon, and definitely not Uranus. So how cool was that? Being able to see Jupiter, being able to see the rings of Saturn. Now it wasn't the clearest thing since sliced bread, but I'm doing it with a F11 lens at F22. I was just amazed that when I found Saturn in the sky and I'm doing the focus punched in at 15X, that I could see the rings. That's 700 million miles away, by the way. So I believe that the light that we're seeing based on like 180,000 miles per second is what the light is traveling at, means that that took place 1300 years ago, the picture or so that I took was like 1300 years ago that it took it that long to get here. All right, let, let's look at the picture. Let's look at this picture, picture, picture of Jupiter. Uh, that's just regular without cropping because I'm gonna crop in this video as you're gonna see But we're gonna go in three to one and you can see that it's Jupiter I mean it doesn't have rings, but it's actually pretty interesting that you can see the the storms that are there But actually check out when you when you raise the shadows you can see other stars showing up at least I think they're stars It could be dust. It could be dust. I'm not sure but I think they're stars. We'll, we'll call them stars, okay? Um, but my settings, one one hundredth or one one sixtieth of a second at f22 ISO 4000. Uh, I had the image stabilization on inside of the lens as well as the body, even though I was on a tripod trying to do this. Is it the greatest thing ever? No. But if you do want to photograph at night and you want to try to photograph the stars with any camera, click up on the screen on the top corner. There's a card there because I did a video called Astrophotography Tutorial: How to Photograph Stars 
cars with a cheap camera. It's only three minutes and 11 seconds, but it is a solid video that's gonna give you the cliff notes on what you need to do to photograph the Milky Way yourself, even with the cheapest of cheapest cameras and a kit lens. Uh, so that's pretty cool right there. Moving on, this is Saturn. Look at that, it's so far away at 700 million miles. But let's zoom in one to one. No, we're zoomed in three to one. Let's go in one to one first. And are you just amazed as I am that I could do this from my roof even with light pollution? And then you go three to one and you're like, okay. I mean, I don't know how to properly process this. I'm gonna put up the raw files. You guys can play with these yourself, maybe, and tag, definitely play with them. But you can tag me and let me see your edits of Jupiter. I mean, train can't do it, drops of Jupiter. That's funny. Um, but I I'm still blown away, because look how far away it is, even with 45 megapixels with the 1600 millimeter uh, shooting. So this is basically where you go ahead and you crop. You go like this, and I'm gonna zoom in three to one and crop it to the three to one crop. Oh, I don't even know what I just did. That shows you how often I crop, because I don't even know how to crop. I do this. I think this is how I crop right, and then I go like this, and then I move this over here. We're doing it, we're cropping everybody, but I don't wanna just put it right here in the middle. I kinda wanna be like, you know what? Let's, let's put it right here, cause I think it will look cool right here. Not exactly in the middle, but on that line and like, ooh, Saturn. Is it, is it the best photo since sliced bread? No. It's, it's not the best photo since sliced bread, but it's more the coolness factor that you can do it. Now, I do want to do a pluggy McPluggerson here. Uh, my, don't think my presets would work too well on something like Saturn, but it works extremely well on this image. Come over here, let's try Skittles and boom. With one click, that's the Skittles edit. That looks pretty good. ACDC? Pretty interesting as well. Let's do a pot. Look, Apollo is very blue, but Apollo, no white balance change, actually could work as well. So if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point, we created 29 different custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack2. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide you wanna pick them up right now, you can save by picking up fropack1 and fropack2 as the fropack bundle. That's what I recommend that you do so you can get all 29 of them and save money. Now remember, it doesn't always work with just one click, but with a click and then some tweaking, you're gonna be good to go with a lot of these presets on a lot of your photos. So this is the moon. Obviously, you can see it in the sky, but this is with no cropping of the moon. Let's do one-to-one. -one. We'll go in one-to-one because -one we're so close. Uh, the focus was a little tough because I had to do it manually focused with this thing because the autofocus, I, I, don't, I don't know, man. It was the moon. Oh, plus the other part was with that wobbly, you know, with the with the video head on the tripod, I every time I tried to lock it in, it just kept moving fluid head wise on its own, and that I I didn't like that. So maybe next time I'll get a tripod that's easier to lock in and be more stable. So that's a good recommendation for the future. But look what you can do with the moon at 1600 millimeters f22. I don't even know if it's fully in focus, but I think I can see Neil Armstrong's. Uh, uh, feet up there, except if you think that it was actually done in a studio, which I don't think it was done in a studio, by the way. Um, he actually uh, landed on the moon. I hope they go back when they go back and they go to the flag and they're like, look, the flag's here. But then people are like, oh no, they planted it. Anyway, you can download these raw files. I thought this was a fun little experiment to go out there and photograph Saturn, Jupiter, the moon, uh, and again, not Uranus, um, and do it with this type of gear. So you could do it with your type of gear. Just get a long ass lens, put a tripod on it, and just shoot, and then get ready to crop later. Uh, so that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Please don't forget to check out that other video. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and that is where I'm gonna leave it. Jared Polin, Photo.com. See ya.